Good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, and this afternoon, we look at how to teach grammar through text and how to practice grammar, which is quite good to assist your teaching. Okay. Now look at it, everyone. So we've uh, looked at text and context, sources of text, practice, accuracy, fluency, and restructuring. Okay, so uh, text and context. When asked about the meaning of a word, there is often a question, what is the context? Okay, what is the context? So a lot of words, mean different things in different contexts okay so like um we are safe now okay put your valuable things in the safe before uh, going out of the room so you can see that safe here is an adjective so the context here is mean uh we are safe now it means that we are not in dangerous situation anymore okay but uh put your valuable thing in self self so self here is is a noun okay according to the context here all right yeah so uh so the context is important that make you actually understand okay uh the meaning in a sentence okay this is the context so with uh, different contexts, the word mean different thing. Okay. Right. So, therefore, meanings of words in a sentence can be determined as long as they are in a clear cut context and have enough references. So, you need a very clear context and you need enough reference to actually determine. Uh, the meaning of a words without these references to make context the words would be decontextualized so if you just say self self and then you have no reference or you have no context so then we do not understand is it is it an adjective or is it a noun okay over here so if you say i'm fine now we are self we are safe, so it, it, it is an adjective, okay. Uh, we have a lot of gold, but then we put it in the safe, so safe is a noun, okay. In the same way, sentences or even text could be decontextualized or ambiguous or unintelligible in the absence of the context. So without context, uh, words are easily to be confused, okay? Very, very ambiguous. It is also important that we are able to distinguish between the context of the surrounding text and the context of the surrounding situation, okay? So you need to actually look at the context of the surrounding text and also the situation around there, okay? Yeah. So. The first kind of context is sometimes called the cold text. Okay, the cold text. Yeah, it is the rest of the text that surround and provide meanings to each language item in the text. So while the second one is called the context of the situation, it show the roles and relationship of the speakers and the mode of communication. Okay, so you have the cold text, and then the context of the situation. Okay. And these show the roles and relationship of the speakers and the mode of the communication. Okay, over here. So, some texts are too difficult for readers with regard to cultural diversity. Yeah, so it's, it's actually, uh, sometimes it's difficult because uh, there is a lot of culture in that, uh, in that context, okay? So in this case, readers need to be able to overcome the cultural barriers, okay? Yeah. These indeed, readers need to have support from cultural texts, context of culture, in order to be able to get the text one, okay? Yeah. 
there are two areas to look at. Okay, uh, we, we look at here, everyone, yes. So we look at uh, the sources of the text, yeah. There are two areas to look at uh, with regard to this text level view of the language. The first is that if learners are going to be able to make sense of grammar, which means that they need to be exposed to uh, it, its context of use and what it means in text. Okay, yeah. So one is uh, one is uh, if learner are going able to make sense of the grammar. Okay, sense of the grammar. Okay, it means that they need to be exposed to its context of use and what it means in the text. Okay, yeah. Secondly, if learner are to achieve a functional command of second language, they will need to be able to understand and produce not just isolated sentences, but whole text in that language. Okay, yeah, the whole text in that language, not only the isolated sentences. Okay, they need to actually uh, understand the whole text. So that's why uh, you need a uh, reliable context over here. However, text-based approach to grammar is now without problems. The problems are related mainly to the choice of the text. Okay, and of course, there are at least four possible sources of text. Yeah, there are four possible sources of text here. You have uh, the course book, the internet, the teacher, and the student dancer. So, what? Where do you usually uh, get the text from? And who do you usually get the text from? The teacher, uh, the, the internet, sometimes the course book, yeah, mainly the course book, not sometimes, and also sometimes student themselves, okay? So we have been looking, uh, okay, now, now we go to grammar breakfast, everyone. We have been looking at ways to present grammar so far, but it doesn't mean that after being presented, students are about to make use all of the grammatical items they have learned. Okay, so uh, uh, your students sometimes actually been presented with the new grammatical forms, but after that, they might not be able to to use uh, the grammar well. So uh, it's somehow it's it's about uh, form focus meaning focus or the combination, okay? It should be the combination. So then um, after they learn the rules, they can actually practice. Some learners seem to be perfect with their grammar, but when it is time to interact, they struggle with the production of, uh, of every verb, okay? So why? Like um, some students are, are perfect, are very good at their at their grammar, but then when they they when they come to uh, really produce uh, what they want to say or uh, to interact to really interact with people, they seem to be very difficult. They struggle. Okay, learners who can cope with the real time communication needs needs seem to be able to fine tune their input, their output. Fine tune their output means select their output, select their output uh, properly, and are readily equipped with automatic language uh, when needed. Okay, yes. So, so the, the language need to, to be pop up in their mind and start speaking, okay, over here. The two objectives of practicing grammar are uh, precision, and applying the system and optimization of the system. So, so one is that uh, you need to be very correct to apply the rules, and then you need to be automatic, you know, to use the system. Okay, so correct and quick. Okay, yeah. Or in other words, the two objectives are usually accuracy, yeah, correct, and fluency, quick. Okay, yeah, quick enough. Yeah. It is significant to know that there is a third type of students who are quite good at grammar and at the same time fluent, but only express a relatively limited range of meaning. 
Okay. Yeah. So the third type of student is that they are good at grammar and they are fluent, but then they can express only some significant meaning, not everything. So it implies that um, in addition to being accurate and fluent, students need to be so critical, need to have a lot of ideas so then they can actually express more ideas in sentences. They are good at grammar, they are good at vocabulary, they are fluent, but they have no ideas, they are stuck. This is what they mean here. So for them, even though they progress, it is not enough to just speak fast and accurately, but to be able to recognize or restructure in order to make it more complex, yeah? Restructure, yeah. So then you need to actually to be more critical in terms of, uh, term of grammatical structures. So uh, critically complex grammatical structures, you need to actually to be able to read structure, to rephrase, to paraphrase, okay? Yeah, so then uh, you make it more complex. Therefore, the third objective of grammar practice is, is restructuring. It means that through practicing it, the grammar, learners come up against situations, against situations which force them to recognize the current knowledge, integrating new knowledge into the old. Okay, yes. So they actually, they recognize their current knowledge and then they integrate the new knowledge into the old one. So they integrate, for example, they integrate uh, the perfect with the passing power, okay? Yes, so they combine together, okay? So we actually look at accuracy again. Learners need to pay attention to form in order to achieve accuracy, but learners have limited attentional resources, and it is often difficult for them to focus on form and meaning at the same time, okay? It means that their, their attention is limited, Okay, they cannot focus too much. Okay, it is difficult for them to focus on form and focus on meaning at the same time. Okay, yeah. Accuracy requires attention and attention with time. It suggests that learners become more accurate, should be, should more time is available. Okay, yeah. Feedback from teacher is also important to improve learners' accuracy. So to be accurate, students need a lot of practice, need more time, and also feedbacks are also needed. In short, practice activity which is uh, good for improving accuracy, we have this characteristic. Attention to form, yeah. Students need to pay attention to form. Uh, familiarity, yeah. students need to be familiar. Thinking time, yeah, need time and also feedback from the teacher. Okay, yeah. so this four are important for the accuracy. While fluency is a skill, it is the ability to process the language uh, speedily and easily. Okay, yeah, the process, ability to process the language speedily and easily. This develop as learners learn to optimize the knowledge. Okay, yeah. So when uh, learners, okay, develop and learn to optimize the language. Okay, optimize the language. It means use the language automatically. One way to do this is to use chunks. So student can actually practice in chunks. Yeah, chunks mean the short phrases. And generally, fluency activities are aimed at the process of uh, optimization. Yeah, sure. So fluency activities, uh, these are activities which want to reach the level of optimization, okay, become automatic, okay. In order to read this, the focus is not on forms, but on meanings, yeah, so meaning focus. The learners are required to focus on what they are saying, not on how. Just on what, but not on how. Using information gaps exercises is one of the 
engineering a focus on meanings okay on meaning yeah information gap exercises a lot of uh, repetition a lot of drills yeah okay in the information gap as the production pass the production of the language is motivated by a communicative purpose rather than by the, the need to display the grammatical knowledge yeah so uh, to reach the fluency level uh, the purpose is must be for the communication not for the forms okay so to sum up where fluency is the goal practice activities should have the following characteristic attention to meaning authenticity communicative purpose chunking and repetition okay over here right okay so uh, now we look at restructuring restructuring involve integrating new information into old yes so uh, yeah so they combine together between the the new knowledge into the old knowledge yeah traditionally restructuring was meant to happen at the at the uh, presentation stage yeah that is learners were expected to learn a new rule and straight away incorporated into their mental grammar yeah, their mental grammar so uh, the grammar which they actually they process in their mind okay yeah however there is a growing belief that restructuring can occur during practice activities yeah some argue that uh, communicative activities such as information get tasks so why a fertile site for the structuring okay yeah and such activity uh, problematize learning yeah so uh, when they actually uh, make uh, restructure okay the sentences for the communicative activities they actually create the problems in their learning and then feedbacks are actually needed here so therefore practice activity designed to aid restructuring might have these characteristics problematizing yeah so uh, focusing like uh, on the problems in their in their sentence making in their restructuring push yeah push student more and scaffolding more okay yes so to sum up what you have learned here everyone now this is the end okay language is a context sensitive there are three levels layer of the context you have context surrounding the text the context of situation and the context of culture yes so three three layers everyone yes three layers context the context of the situation and the context of the culture yeah Grammar is best taught and practiced in context. Yeah. So this means that using the whole text as context for grammar teaching. Yeah. And practice activity which provide the development, your accuracy focus on forms, and fluency focus on meaning. Okay. And then uh, restructuring. Okay. All right. So uh, I will send the discussion question for this afternoon to uh, the group. Please check and then the learn well before we go to the discussion panel in the live zoom meeting everyone and um, thank you for your attention see you soon